There's something I've been meaning to talk to you about. Have you been taking care of your bones? No! This could lead to one of the most prevalent diseases of aging. Osteoporosis! This is a healthy bone, and this is an unhealthy bone. Our bone density decreases as we age. We reach our peak at age 30, and then it just decreases from there. See? Bone density loss is not preventable or curable, but we can reduce the risk if we take care of our bones at an early age. Hmm, I think Alina knows a lot more about it. You should ask her. Hey! Calcium is the most abundant mineral in your body, but it's only one of the three main factors involved in keeping strong, healthy bones. Ideally, you should be having 1,000 to 2,500 milligrams of calcium, or 4 to 8 cups of milk per day. However, you don't want to have all of that milk at once because our body absorbs around 300 milligrams of calcium per meal or about one cup's worth of milk. Some excellent sources of calcium include dairy products, dark leafy greens, tofu, canned fish with salmon, and many legumes, nuts, or seeds. recommend that could help improve bone health? Absolutely. Uh, so for bone health, what's really important is calcium and vitamin D. So everyone thinks about milk for calcium, mm -hmm. but yogurt is actually even higher than milk in terms of its calcium content. Plus it also contains vitamin D. So if you're not a big milk fan, definitely going towards yogurt. Also a lot of the milk substitutes contain equivalent amounts of calcium and vitamin D. Something like almond milk is very popular right now and it's a great bang for the buck calorie wise. If you get an unsweetened almond milk, it's only 30 calories per cup. Mm. So a lot of people are hesitant to add calcium rich foods because if they don't like them, they think, oh, well, why am I going to add extra calories to my diet if I don't even like them? Uh, but looking for, you know, lower calorie options are great. Um, also products like cheese contain a lot of calcium, but the downside to that, more saturated fat, more salt. So you want to limit Very that. Calorie -dense. Exactly. Actually, another surprising one that's good for calcium is hummus. And also tinned salmon is something that's excellent because of the bones in there. And if you just smush them up, actually I mix hummus and canned tuna, or sorry, canned salmon together, and it's a great source of calcium and you, it tastes pretty good. What about some go-to uh, fruits and vegetables that are supposed to have calcium? What would you say about that with regard to bioavailability mm -hmm. and the amount you actually get from the food? Yeah, absolutely. A lot of dark leafy green vegetables are great sources of calcium. Unfortunately, due to some of the other compounds in our greens, sometimes calcium isn't as absorbable as it is in our dairy products. So that's why we always suggest things like yogurt, milk, and cheese as a primary source. But secondary to that, certainly greens. In fact, collard greens, very popular in the south, in the south southern U.S., um, not as common here, but they're the absolute highest in calcium. They're great for lettuce wraps and wrapping burgers and things like that. Um, kale is obviously great, spinach, uh, legumes as well, chickpeas, black beans, navy beans are also a good source. Yes, it's true that calcium from some vegetables is better absorbed than from dairy products. However, there's so much more calcium in dairy products that you don't get nearly as much if you're trying to get your calcium from vegetable sources. For example, you only absorb 5% of your calcium from spinach compared to 30% from a glass of milk. Let's do some comparisons. A cup of milk gets you 300 milligrams of calcium. A cup of kale gives you 100 milligrams. Or 8 ounces of low-fat plain yogurt gives you 450 milligrams of calcium. Mm. Vitamin D is an essential vitamin for promoting strong, denser bones. You see, vitamin D helps us absorb the calcium into our bodies. So low vitamin D intakes, the calcium going into our bones, is also going to be very low. You should be having around 600 international units of vitamin D. What that looks like is about two cups of milk. Mmm, it's so good. If you're not a big dairy fan, you can find vitamin D in many other products, including fish, mushrooms, 
and many products fortified with vitamin D, such as margarine. Let's go to the gym! Yeah! Regular resistance exercise can cause an increase in bone density. It can also lower the risk of osteoporosis. This happens from regeneration of your tissue due to the strain put onto your bones. Bones are designed to adapt to the changing forces applied to them when lifting objects or simply moving any muscle of your body. So, the same hormones that promote muscle growth promote bone growth. Resistance training can be anything from the weights that you find in the gym to your own body weight. In controlled trials for a resistance exercise, it was found that you can increase your bone mineral density by 2-5% to every year in times of growth. Would you say that resistance training is uh, important in maintaining bone health? Definitely resistance training, but more important than that is um, impact activities like walking, running, anything where you're upright, you're going to be um, impacting your bone health um, more positively, that's for sure. Great. Okay. So, why is it important to dry your lettuce before adding the dressing? You see, Water forms a surface layer, preventing the dressing from properly clinging to the greens. This causes the dressing to sink to the bottom, which makes for quite a boring salad. Hey! So this episode's question, what is a brain freeze? So remember, sustain your body, sustain your life. Thanks for watching. Add some stevia to it first. <laughs>